But as far as this theory concern, you know, uh, Becker's theory concern, in his theory, the motivation of discrimination is based on non-peculiar variable, generally designated as based for this And it is not based on the objective criteria like a quality or a price. It is a subjective criteria. I sit in the interview board. I apply even the individual comes from the uh, uh, from the from the central class of civil society community. I apply two characteristics characteristics into a discussion with he comes from this kind of a community. I apply community characteristics, not the individual characteristics. This is what the whole thing that, you know, when theory of uh, discrimination was written, he has black and white in mind. That is better. But the thing is, he said, there is a case for discrimination. That is true everywhere, even now. There is a case for discrimination. We don't, we don't understand whether mother is a case for discrimination. While I'm talking, I talk very nicely. But I sit in the decision making, I have my own case. What you can understand what I say. So, then, of course, uh, what he said is that the employers with the taste for discrimination against blacks feel that the real burden is more than the money wage burden. And this dissatisfaction felt by the presence of blacks in their firm is an additional burden. And uh, in neoclassical theory, not only he said the employer discrimination, but also he was talking about employee discrimination and consumer discrimination. Employee discrimination in the sense that I don't want to work with him today, but he was trying to theory that what he's trying to what he's trying to say is discrimination by employees should happen when one group of employees say males refuse to work with another group of females. You can put any minor and measure to go with that. Even though females are as to the previous males. This is what he's trying to say. But in but consumer market discrimination occurs when consumers dislike purchasing goods and services to which by a group. And quite often you can see that there are one baby that produces milk. We look at many case studies in India, a lot of micro studies, saying that they don't want to buy milk because they want to buy milk. There's a consumer market. So, not only did Professor Becker has stored a beautiful word called test for discrimination and articulated employer, employer consumer market. And here the discriminatory behavior is not based on any objective like a quality of trust. That's the whole genesis of the theory. And later on, when the era of another Nobel Prize winner, he, he also has come out with employer discrimination, not because of their case to discriminate, but because of uncertainty. The era was here, so theoretically using consumer choice theory and theory of the firm, that firms where employers you know, discriminate against, say, female to pay less than male workers. A very similar discussion also has been given by Edmund Burns in 1972, what he called it as statistical theory of discrimination. But both the Arrow and Phelps, the theoretical insights are more. On the same, they developed the theory of discrimination on the basis of lack of information about job applicants. That's why I said lack of information about the job, job applicant. I apply group characteristics. He is black community, he comes from the black community. I apply group, group characteristics to his job. That's what, you know, the discrimination that arising from the assertive information about that in group. And in addition, as Professor Torek yesterday was that's just watching on, he was mentioning other groups. There are another Nobel Prize winner in, the, in the economics. There are, he's the first, he's the first man. He has written a paper on what is the general of economics. 1970, 1980, the economic task, rat plays and the other awful stories. That's a beautiful article. I urge you to read the first one. And according, of, uh, according to him, according, uh, according to him, is that the discriminatory behavior is, is, is because of social custom. According to social custom view, the discrimination of personal phenomena occurs due to certain social conventions maintained among the empires. What is trying to say, Akhlov incorporates the social structure. Akhlov incorporated the social structure 
introduce model to explain the economic phenomena of income distribution and resource allocation. He assumes that all the economic students know that utility depends on not only consumption but also in individual prestige and reputation in the society. I think he is gone away from the neoclassical. It is not utility depends on the consumption, it is depends on the individual prestige and the reputation in society. So, all this uh, economic theory of labor market discrimination is there in the neoclassical and very recently the Zenotos, the other uh, theory has come into the picture. They are very, I, I think I have seen only one author, Zenotos, he has come up with the application of general equilibrium theory. We all learn general equilibrium in micro and macro uh, in the classroom. But all they have used to, 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 to elicit information and articulate the social issues. In the first, that is, that is a general of European, uh, general of European political economy, the Senate goes 1997. He has used the general economy model. He's the first attempt in the world, but there is no attempt so far. The main aim of this study is to find out what happens to wages and profits if the wage differential by cash by deliberative change or by sex deliberative change. That means the discrimination, he views that discrimination is a misallocation of resources. If you remove discrimination, what will happen to the wages of the profit? That's the whole idea behind that. So, we, the economic teachers, will we teach not necessarily the micro and macro, the application of micro and macro to the social issues or that, and it's that that we have to bring those knowledge to the students. That's what the United States want to put this. But when you, when, you, when, you, when you talk about this is, a, this is the Western theory, Western theory is the first line when they were talking about Western theory. When you talk about the developing countries, why government? The question arises, why government in, uh, 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 in developed and developing countries concern about economic discrimination? Is discrimination is only an equity issue or also it involves economic cost to the society? Or the cost it imposes on the society more social and political than economic? These are all the questions that happen if they hampers the minds of the policy makers and the bureaucrats and the administrators in India. But when you look at the inside of the main stream economic theory of discrimination, which indicates economic discrimination, particularly market discrimination, do have an economic growth. It brings unequal income distribution and deprivation for discrimination group. It has created a potential situation for an intergroup conflict. And also discrimination also affects productivity by reducing the magnitude of investment in human capital by discriminated group and the right of